The Great Elephant March of 2017 from Charlottesville to D.C. My name is Paul Gordon, and I am with iState.tv, and this is an iState News Watch. Alternative title for this could be, or the truth about the march to confront white supremacy, Charlottesville to D.C. There's a rather dramatic march that has begun today, August 28th, 2017, that in some ways reminds me of Hannibal's march across the Swiss Alps, slogging a handful of elephants along with him. And that march began in the spring of 218 B.C. The march itself is remembered primarily because Hannibal managed to negotiate a handful of elephants over the Alps. And he would eventually enter the Italian peninsula with a number of elephants that survived the perilous journey. He won a few battles, but ultimately he lost the war. Well, this march promises to not be so perilous and will largely be conducted in territory that is already occupied by the, I'm going to put this in air quotes, army marching through it. The march kicked off today, August 28th, in Charlottesville, Virginia, home to a mayor that may or may not have used his authority to artificially create the perfect climate for violence. It is also the place where a woman was tragically killed by a possibly schizophrenic but actual white supremacist who will hopefully, hopefully get the kind of treatment he decided to dole out. The march will go through a number of towns equally as friendly to the causes that this army stands for. And that the march will end triumphantly in September 6, 2017 in Washington, D.C. Now, the march is called the March to Confront White Supremacy, Charlottesville to D.C. First of all, oh, that is a terrible, I mean, a Terrible title for a march. Yes, <laughs> I am channeling my inner Jesse Jackson. But hey, don't let marketing get in the way of a good session of virtue signaling through friendly territory where you get to pretend you're defeating some sort of mass movement that doesn't exist. Now, to be sure, white supremacy is on the rise. But it ain't the Godzilla devouring the countryside that these folks will have you believe it is. Now, here's the reason that they give for having the march with constant interruption supplied by me because, folks, that's how, that is how I roll. Oh, for years, white supremacist violence, rhetoric, and policies have escalated and intensified. Okay, so I can't completely say that the rhetoric hasn't intensified. It has. It has intensified everywhere for everyone, including white supremacist rhetoric. I cannot deny that. But I don't believe that the violence has actually intensified. And statistically speaking, it seems violence overall is on the decline. What has changed is how crime has been categorized, which might lead to some statistical increases in racial violence. But I think... I think largely the whole everyone is violent and we're all going to die narrative is fear-mongering at best. As for the policies, well, I can't recall any recent legislation, laws, regulations that have targeted certain people because of the color of their skin. Now, perhaps they can make a case for the crackdown on so-called illegal aliens, whatever whatever the heck that means in targeting Muslims, but that doesn't really seem to be so much about white supremacy as it does good old-fashioned xenophobia. Yes, see? <laughs> it's a different kind of tribal fear than what this army of racial equality will have you believe it is. So let, let's, let's, let's resume their rant. Exploding. During Donald Trump's run for president, on reaching a boiling point in Charlottesville, as courageous people of moral conscience stood up to an army of white nationalists, neo-Nazis, and members of the KKK. Courageous people. I'm not sure how courageous you have to be to stand up to a couple hundred uh, white supremacists uh, when you're standing with a group of thousands. I mean, uh, just take that in. This was a big hyped event. Unite the right broadcast far and wide and 
You got a couple hundred people to show up. That is the big movement there, folks. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that you're not really being all that courageous at all when your side outnumbers the other side by margins of at least 10 to 1. If anything, the white supremacists are in, in the very strictest sense of the word. And I'm going to need to put this in quotation marks because I definitely have to offer a qualifier here. The courageous ones. Which just goes to show you, folks, that courage in and of itself is not necessarily an indicator of character. To put it bluntly, really, really bad people with really, really bad ideas are capable of being courageous. Despite their courage, for instance, the white supremacists were and truly are despicable cretins that are I think kind of put themselves in a position to have to have that courage in the first place. The Tiki Torch tools, they done earned the hate that they got thrown back at them. And now comes the key part of the march and where those lofty elephants start to start to come into play. Oh, this is the time for us to stand up for justice and equality. This is the time to confront white supremacy in our government and throughout our history. <laughs> Confronting white supremacy in the past? What are you going to do? Reanimate the dead so you can punish them? I mean, if you can do that, great. I will pay. I will pay to see that. Or are you going to punish the people that are related to them but had nothing to do with the decisions those individuals made? I'm suspecting it's, uh, yeah, I think it's more likely that one. What, do, what does it even mean to confront the white supremacy throughout our history? Will you be firing up DeLoreans and going back in time to punch those white supremacists in the face? If so, again, that would be awesome and I would totally pay to see that. As a matter of fact, if you want to start a GoFundMe that, 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 that you actually have some credibility that you can build a DeLorean and go back in time and punch actual white supremacists in the face, I'm all for it. Now, what about this justice and equality? Well, who defines justice? I'm betting they don't define it the same way I do. Who defines equality? I'm betting they don't define equality the same way I do. Are you marching for equal outcomes or equal opportunity? Because that's a pretty significant difference there. I'm betting it's outcomes. Will you be out empowering the coercive enterprise, the state, to define justice, to define equality, to pick winners and losers? In other words, this is, this is the giant elephant that you're dragging with you. Will you be advocating for a system of oppression to replace the system of oppression? Sam, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put you down. I'm going to put you down for yes. The big old elephants that these courageous marchers who will have overwhelming support of Americans of all colors, who will be marching in friendly territory, who will outnumber white supremacists by at least 10 to 1, maybe more, wherever they go, is the course of enterprise. These brave marchers will be dragging along those coercive enterprise elephants right with them, imagining a world where suddenly, suddenly the coercive enterprise, the one that gave power to those who feared competition, the one that gave power to those who feared the other, will not simply continue to give power to those who fear competition, will not simply continue to give power to those who fear the other. The nature of their brave march can be seen in their last statement here. We demand that President Trump be removed from office for allying himself with this ideology of hate. And we demand an agenda that repairs the damage it's done to our country and our people. Oh, lovely. This, 
That's really loaded there, isn't it? You demand Trump be removed? Are you openly advocating for all-out mob rule? Are you actually assembling a mob to overthrow an elected president and imagining that you could, should actually do that? I don't, don't get me wrong. Any form of democracy is, is actually mob rule. But in this case, we're talking direct mob rule, which has to be worse than indirect mob rule. I'm, I'm guessing. I'm not 100% sure. But I'm going to go ahead and guess it's probably, probably worse. How do you think the millions of Trumpians will react when you actually succeed in your stated goal? Are you telegraphing that you pretty much want a civil war? Now, folks, I don't want to alarm anyone here because you know what? I'm guessing no. I'm guessing that the injection of this coyote like stated goal is another elephant that they're dragging with them. Only this one is designed not to strike fear in the enemy, but it's designed to get more, more marchers, no, suckers, more suckers to sign up for, for your marketing program which I suspect is, is what this really is. Now let's get to their, to their other goal here of uh, demanding an agenda. Well, what, what agenda? What kind of agenda are you pushing for? Now I, I cannot say for sure, because this is a number of groups that have come together, but as the groups involved in this march are decidedly from the statist left, and I want to emphasize statist left, it most likely involves morality and speech beliefs. It most likely involves redistribution of wealth. It most likely involves special protected classes and special targeted classes. And it most likely involves disarming the people who are subject to the power of the coercive enterprise. Yeah. The people in the end will who will benefit the most from this march are, are actually the organizers, the ones collecting the email addresses and donations from the thousands of suckers that will be thrown in with this march to D.C. that seeks to give even greater power to the state than it already has. But this time, this time it'll be different because we will get the right leaders and identify the right villains. Yay! I peed in your government. I peed in your government. The organizers will gain more political and economic power, whether this march actually changes political structure or not. And if it does succeed in changing political, structure, political structures, it will do no more than shift the dirt around like a bunch of weighty elephants being dragged across the Alps to no strategic advantage save for the symbolism of it all. In the end, they're fighting for the same powers that they're telling you, the potential marcher, the potential donor, the potential email listing. That's all you are. You're an email listing. You're a donor. You're, you're a visual that shows the power that these people have, power that they're going to use well, basically to make money, that they're fighting to end because you see the people behind the curtain. The people, and there's not one wizard, folks. There's a, there's a number of wizards behind that curtain. The people managing the show that you are now getting to enjoy on an almost now daily basis have their money hooks in all sides. No matter who wins, they win. Any side that is able to scare a significant portion of people to hand over more of their liberty to grant grant more power to the coercive enterprise that's that's all that these wizards behind the uh, the the curtain want 
If you want to strike the root, strike the coercive enterprise. If you want to negate real racism, if you want to end real white supremacy, take away the potential tools that make such ideas dangerous. The tools of the coercive enterprise, the state. Because if you take away those tools, then all you have are really stupid ideas that will most likely get the people who, who believe in these things, who say these things out loud, pretty much ostracized from most of the other people who just who just who just want to who who want to live who who want to be able to send their children off in a world where they have a chance to to be able to live the lives of their own choosing so drag your elephants through friendly territory and imagine that you are somehow on par with MLK who marched literally into the teeth of police dogs. At the end of the day, like Hannibal before you, you may run off a string of victories as you win battle after battle. But you've already lost the war because you're not directly attacking the true power behind the monsters that you fear. The real ones and the imagined ones. Below, well, actually... In the link, uh, uh, in the description below, you'll find some more information about this march. Judge for yourself. If you think this march will fundamentally change anything, save for a few lucky individuals who might find a way to benefit from a new world order. Here comes the new oppressive system. Same as the old oppressive system. So my name is Paul Gordon, and you have been watching iState.tv's News Watch. Be sure that you like, share, comment, ho oh, oh, ho, and whatever you do, subscribe. And if you're going to subscribe, you're going to take the time to subscribe, then hit that freaking bell so you know when I make my, my, next, my next video. And also be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, it's at iStateTV. And for all of the links to all the shows and all the articles and everything that we do through iState, it's real easy to remember, is tv.me. And remember, if you don't subscribe and you don't hit that bell, maybe you should move to Somalia. <laughs>